that kind of stuff would drive my mom nuts. Mine too. But, um, um, I always thought it was just a mom thing in general. Like, at my retail job, um, we, there are two associates in particular. Well, they're both, I think the, their rank is a like supervisor or something. And sometimes they'll tell me, uh, like, if it's, uh, there are no customers, just to clean up behind the register. And both of these uh, um, supervisors happen to be moms, so maybe it kind of comes from that. But I tell them, well, what mess? There's, it's fine here. I don't see any mess. <laughs> well, the other thing is, um, a lot. There's a lot of. Um, there's a sort of perception that a lot of moms are ISFJ or ESFJ, mm-hmm. uh, and I actually posted about this on the Personality Cafe. Uh, mm-hmm. That there's a lot of reasons that can contribute to that. One is the idea that uh, ISFJs and ESFJs combined make up like a third of the female population. Wow. That's uh, some statistic says that. I'm not sure how accurate it is. Uh, but also, if you look at the, the, the descriptions of, uh, of SFJs, um, it sounds like a traditional mom. <laughs> That's hilarious. Because... Um... I was thinking it can't possibly be that other types of women choose not to have children. I mean, it's possible, but yeah, yeah. there was one part of there was a time in history when people were expected to have children because they couldn't really do anything else with their lives. Yeah, um, and I think uh, I don't know. Well, there's you know there's the the possibility that you know once once somebody you know a woman becomes a mom that you know she might. Uh, like her values might change, even though the, even if her her own, I mean, her innate personality is not going to change, but her values will. Uh, you know, I hear a lot of um, most moms that I talk to say that becoming a mom has has really taught them a lot, and they you know, it's like really changed them. So, um, so their 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 whole belief system you know might might change, and they might actually mistype as as an IS as an ESFJ or ISFJ. Okay. And uh, a lot of you know, a lot of us might type our our, our parents as uh, you know, as as SJs just because that's the only aspect of them that, that we've seen, um, or you know, or it's the first thing that comes to mind when we think of them. Um, uh, you know, and and the thing to keep in mind about typing other people is that you know, it's not strictly about behavior. Mm-hmm. You know, even on personality cafe, they make this mistake. Like if you're filling out one of those type me questionnaires, and people will just look at your answers as, uh, you know, what would you do in this situation? And you know, they they just think that because a person behaves this way, that means they're this type. Uh, well, it might not be. They might it might just be a learned response. You know, which is true in my case. Why I'm I was just thinking I never want to be a mom. Too much work. <laughs> Yeah. Um, also, I feel like the world, like, it's not a very nice place, and even if I could raise my child well, there's other factors that I can't control, and I can't subject a child to that because it's just awful. And also because um, if I suddenly decide that I don't want to be a mom anymore, well, should, I don't know if I should really give up my children, even though that might be something I'd want to do at that moment. And also because it would deprive me of my freedom. See, the, the more the more I, you know, I hear you uh, talk about yourself, and the more I think you're 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 like a P type. Perhaps. It's uh, yeah, just enjoying freedom and not wanting to commit to something. Because I I'm that way too. Uh, I hate making commitments. Um, I'll keep any commitments I make just because. Uh, it's part of my, my value system. I don't, you know, I don't believe in breaking commitments, but just for that reason, I you know I avoid making commitments in the first place. I see. I was um yeah. Another thing is that I'm thinking that the reason why I don't want to be be married or have children or have a religion is because I like my life to be as easy as possible. Because I feel like there are already a lot of difficult things I have to deal with, and I love easy. Like no commitments if they are not required of me. The only commitment in my life that I really want to have is a job, and that's mostly because it's something that I need to survive anyway. Yeah, and that, that totally makes sense. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, you, you want a stable job just so you can you know, earn a living and you know, use that money to do what you want. And, 
-hmm. but you, like you were saying, you you enjoy the uh, the one aspect about substitute teaching is like it's, it's flexible and you know you can work you know you don't have to work you know, you know full eight hours every day. Yeah, I feel like sometimes flexibility can hurt me though because one time I had taken an online class in college and uh, I guess for whatever reason I wasn't checking up on my progress like the grades that the professor posted on the page online and I ended up getting a D and I had to take it again and I took it with a class uh, that we met in person and I got an A minus. I did so much better just because I had the structure of going to class every day and making sure that my work there got done and I could ask my professor any questions in person if necessary. Was it like a? Was it more, so it was more like just, just lack of information? Or just... Uh, I don't know. I mean, I did my work for that class, but apparently the online thing, the reason why I didn't do well is because I had been uh, missing a lot of assignments that I didn't realize. I mean, first of all, I signed up for the class uh, kind of late. And secondly, um, there were some assignments that I was so sure that I did, but uh, apparently I didn't because at the end of the semester, which was the only time I looked at my grades, looks like they were never done. There's never any grade there for them. It was zero. And I guess it's my own fault for not keeping track. Um, I, th I think, though, that in college, even if you have a class in person, the professor will not always tell you if you're missing an assignment because they figure that's your responsibility since you're an adult. But, I don't know. I think that um, taking online class for me not good because it's difficult for me to check my progress. Mm. Yeah, it's. I mean, yeah, that taking on taking on new responsibilities has always been been a problem for me. Mm -hmm. uh, like I, yeah, my my grades just like gradually went down when I was in college. Mm. A part of it is just the whole like being you know being on my own and having to set my own schedule and not really being able to do that that well. Having all these other distractions. But, uh, yeah, in college, I think I may have been kind of undisciplined at times, especially um, if professors did not specifically state that attendance would count. There were times when I had class at 10 a.m. or even 1 p.m., and I decided, well, I'm too tired to wake up and go to class, so I think that I will skip class today and go back to sleep. Even with classes, though, that they didn't say that attendance counted, if it was a difficult class where I'd be totally lost if I didn't go, then I'd make myself go. But otherwise, it was kind of easy. I would just not go sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's same with me. Like, uh, yeah, the, the, like the classes where where homework, um, where homework didn't count towards a grade. You know, you tend to, it's really easy to just blow it off. Why would they say that? If I were a good professor, I would at least make my students think that it counted. Well, because it's all about. You know, they, they want you to learn the, the, the process of, you know, like, this is how you learn. Like, the, what really counts is how, the, is how you retain the, the knowledge at the end of the course. And that's why, like, it, it's all about, you know, uh, midterm exams and final exams. And, like, you know, if you don't do the homework, then you're not learning the material. Uh, and if you think you can get by without without doing the homework, then by all means don't do it. But, you know, uh, you know but don't blame, you know, don't blame me if, um, uh, if you fail the final exam because you didn't do the work, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I think that's uh, I don't know. It's, most of my professors didn't do that, but I, I you know, a few, a few did, and uh, uh, I think I, I guess I was kind of, kind of fortunate that it did happen when I was during my freshman year, when I was still already fairly disciplined after high school. Um, but I think otherwise I would have, you know, I, I gradually learned things like I've been, you know, because I was raised by, you know, by, by SJ parents, um, you know, I had like, I had the skills to be disciplined, um, but, you know, for the more time I spend on my own, I gradually learned you know, little things like, oh, you know, I don't have to quite do it this way. I don't have to, you know, do this work right away. It'll still get done. And then I just got, you know, I would get more and more lazy and then, um, you know, thing, 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 with just uh, with the way I live at home, like the like the laundry thing. You know, 
I used to, you know, do things just like how my mom did it, like, you know, fold the laundry as soon as it comes out of the dryer, and, you know, do do it on a regular schedule, and then after a while, I was like, you know, I don't really have to do it, you know, no one, no one's, no one's going to complain if I, if I don't yeah. do it that way. I was just thinking, that's something my mom does, though, that my dad hates. Like, she'll do things at the last minute, and then my dad will say, well, why didn't you do it earlier? Because my dad is the type who will actually wake up early to do work in the house, even though it's not something that is required to be done at a certain time. He likes doing it early. But my mom, because she stays up late a lot getting work done around the house, she will wake up really late as well, and it's something that really bothers him. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely definitely a J aspect. Yes, that will be my dad. Um, well, let's see. Um, but about N versus S. Um, For myself, I'm not too sure because um, I seem to have, obviously, characteristics of both if I'm not sure what I am. Well, that's the thing. Everyone has. I mean, everyone uses all eight functions at some point. It's just that we, we have a preference for, for certain, like a certain order of functions. Mm. So I don't know what my preference is. Um, well, I think the thing is the other the other thing is the the reason I was on the border between N and S was mm -hmm. because you know uh, the function order of an ISTP is introverted thinking, and mm -hmm. then extroverted sensing. And then introverted intuition, and then introverted feeling. So the the sensing and intuition are like right next to each other. And if I if I develop both of those two functions, uh, and I take a Myers Briggs test that doesn't distinguish between functions, I'll be answering uh, yes to a lot of the N and S questions. So I'm, right. that might have happened in your case too. I think it may have because um let me see here. Looking at different functions that I've tested as, um, I know for INTJ it would be neat if you say, which is with the intuition as the dominant function, and sensing is the last one, so I guess there's not that much sensing going on with them. Um, ISTJ have also tested as they have CTFINE, so they've got very little intuition coming out since their primary is sensing. And in your case, I thought it was somebody else even pointed this out that the fact that you scored like what was it like one hundred percent T or something? Yes. And the, oh, here, son. That's what I say. <laughs> yeah. So I mean that that would make sense if you're a dominant thinker. Um, I guess. Yeah, and I I really don't think you're dominant extrovert thinking. So, <laughs> no. Um. So yeah, that would narrow it down to actually ISTP and INTP. Yeah, I just don't think of myself as an extroverted person in general. Yeah. Because so. uh, I was thinking, like, at my retail job and my sub job too, I kind of have to be ex uh, I kind of act like I'm extroverted because sometimes I'll be um, really friendly and loud, but I don't know. At the same time, like when I work in retail, sometimes. I'll be reluctant to say hello to customers if we're on the sale when we're on the sales floor. I mean, I have to because our job says that we have to, but um, I have to kind of force myself to because um, I don't know. I feel like if customers have employees saying hello to them all the time whenever they're just trying to shop, that they might feel bombarded. At the same time, I don't like to bombard customers with a bunch of questions that I have to ask when they're at the register. I have to say hello. You have your card. Find everything you need today. Do you have any coupons? Do you want to take our survey? Actually, we should say, please take our survey. It gives an excellent score. Otherwise, we'll get fired. <laughs> all we won't all get fired if they don't give us a good score. However, um, something that my store and a lot of others use to rank themselves. And by the way, I heard that at Target, which is not where I work, that um, people are under a lot of pressure to get. Um, customers to sign up for the credit card, otherwise the employees could get their hours cut or they could even get fired, which I think is awful because they can't, I don't know, like even if somebody's really good at convincing somebody, there's only so much you can do for that because some people, maybe they just do not qualify for a credit card or maybe they have it already. I think that a lot of these corporations, they have their systems all backwards. Oh man, oh, it's all corporate marketing. 
Yeah, I, I don't understand it because it just, in my opinion, defies common sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, it's all part part of the system. And mm -hmm. I just navigate through it. Mm, too sad. Yeah. But uh, you know, you, when you were saying though about uh, about having to be outspoken at your job, you know, that's that has nothing to do with personality type. That's just that's what you're expected to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and you might even acquire the skill after you, you know, go for a while, but that still doesn't change your personality. Mm -hmm. Like I was talking to um, I was talking to Rena for Personality Cafe. And uh, you know, if you if you watch her videos, like she looks like an extrovert. Uh, she's you know really open and friendly, outgoing, talkative, and, uh, like really engages with people in conversation. Well, that's only you know. Well, she says it's because she she's had to lead seminars before, mm -hmm. and at one point she was a restaurant manager, I think, and she she became fluent in sign language. I forgot to ask her why. But all of these things, like you know, made her like it gave her the skills to you know, to be outgoing and, and to to be you know, talkative with people. Um, but at, at the end of the day, she needs to be alone to to recharge. And uh, you know, it's, it's something you know you never be able to doubt, to tell just from interacting with her for five minutes. I was thinking I could never be a store restaurant manager because I don't like to hear people's complaints, and especially if it's a corporation and I, as a manager, have to answer to somebody. I can't tell them what I really want to tell them. Like, I was thinking if I owned my own store, I would be so rude to our rude customers because I think that if somebody is, I guess, giving me poor treatment, then I should do the same to them. Yeah. And not all instances, however, I don't know, I feel like that if somebody decides that they're not going to be nice to you, then it's okay for you to just be a little snarky. Yeah, and that's yeah, and that's 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 the totally thing thing with the with me is like, have you ever been approached for like those those pyramid like Amway the, those pyramid schemes? Uh, no, but my parents have actually. Uh, one time, uh, one of my friends from school, like he is, uh, he does Amway, and he uh contacted me a few times saying that if I'd like asking if I'd like to attend uh, certain meetings where they talk about it. And I kept uh, declining until suddenly, until he had decided to stop contacting me, just because I guess he got the message that I wasn't quite interested. Because I feel I feel like something like that is not for me. Like if I'm gonna start my own business, I would like to do it to be completely autonomous instead of being part of a big company. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah same same with me. I and the whole thing with with Amway, it's like it's all about getting other people to join. And that that's where you, know, you you earn money when other people earn money. Yeah, I hate when anything that requires you to make other people join because if I ask people to do that, I feel like I'm being pushy. So um, the most that I've done with my own business is like buying and selling things on eBay. And I had that experience um, recently where I sold something on eBay and I ended up not making a profit because I bought the item for really cheap and then I sold it. And I decided to absorb the shipping costs, which was a big mistake. So oh. I sold the same product just a couple days ago, and I sold it the same store. Like they bought it at the same price. However, I added the shipping cost on, so this way this, I'll be able to make some profit. Okay. Not gonna start. <laughs> mm. And I used to buy and sell books online when I was in college. There was only one time I ever really made a big profit because, you know, they depreciate in value, which is, um, I mean, it's not that bad considering that it could be much worse. Like, from my university bookstore, if you buy a book, it's so expensive, and then when you sell it back to the bookstore, they give you only 5 or $10. So at least I was able to make much more by reselling them online. Yeah, that's interesting because I, I still have all like almost all of my college textbooks, and I haven't yeah I kept them yeah for that very reason like you, you can't sell them back for anything that's you know that would make it worth it. Yeah, I feel really bad that there's some college textbooks I still have just because I they never sold, and the reason why is probably because I never made uh, I never 
change the prices according to how other people were selling them because if you don't sell them at a competitive price then people will not buy them. Yeah. So I don't know. The problem is that a lot of those books I, I don't even know where in my house they are. But if I find them then I'll change the prices so then they can sell and then I can ship them out and get them out of my house. I hope that they're all the latest edition, otherwise it'll be much lower value. Yeah. Well, there, yeah, there's no way mine would be <laughs> anywhere near up to date by now. There, I don't know, so just like... So just... Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was just typing something here on another website. I'm kind of browsing other pages while speaking to you here because instead of just looking at, at ourselves on a screen, I figure I can make myself useful and do something else too. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, yeah, I, I wish I knew like some good questions to ask to figure out like which which n and n functions you prefer. Yeah, oh, I never answering. I mean, asking questions. I don't even try to type other people because I feel like it's just a waste of my time to try to understand other people. Yeah. Well, there there is value in it, uh, depending on. What you plan to do with it? Some people just find it interesting. Um, I don't know. Mm, I see. There, there. Are, I know there, there are personality type or psych type experts that that can tell person's type just by listening to to their conversation, their communication styles. Jeez! Wow! <laughs> I wish I had that kind of gift. It's a yeah. I mean, it's a skill that you, you develop over time. Mm. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how they do it. Yeah. I was looking online, it was CAPT.org, and you can take MBTI assessment on there, however, because you're taking it with a consultant who will give you personalized results, you have to pay like $150 or so, I think. I think so, let me see here, I'm looking at the page right now, it's just, yeah, take the MBTI with personal feedback, yeah, it says, um, the fee for this service in the U.S. is one hundred and fifty dollars, um, and I know that the same website, like they inform you about um, certification workshops, so you can be certified to administer MBTI tests. And one time I almost took one because um, they had a like they had a workshop in the next town over for me, so it would have been very convenient. But I ended up not doing it because the cost, like it was fifteen hundred dollars or so. And also because I'm not sure if um, this kind of certification would really benefit me at this point in my life. But in case I decide that sometime I'd like to take it, they have them in New York City all the time. And that's not that far from me. Like I could do that. I'm just looking on the page here. You know, just from uh, just from listening to you talk for like you know, the last, last five or ten minutes, I've been hearing a lot of what sounds like NE? Because um, you say it sounds like you're you're generating. You, you tend to generate a lot of ideas on on the spot, or or you think of a lot of possibilities. Just, yeah. I mean, just uh, just you know, just more like as as you're speaking, like ideas come to you. Uh, whereas mm -hmm. um, people who prefer SE will just talk about just straight facts and here in the here and now and what you know what's mm -hmm. already true. I see. But, uh, yeah, right now I'm looking at the website, and sure enough, there is one in New York in December if I decide I want to do that. But I don't know. Um, might require a little bit more thinking on my part because, um, again, I sometimes have if it's something that's this expensive that I would consider to be an investment. That is, if it really is worth it, then you know, first I have to take some time to earn that kind of money. I did used to have enough money in my bank account, but then. Uh, I decided every few months I would empty my bank account so that I can make big payments towards my student loan. So if something like being MBTI certified would be something that might really benefit me over the long term, then I think I'd be willing to spend the money and the time to take the workshop and become certified. Hmm. That'd, that'd be interesting. Yeah, I wonder if I'd get a lot of work. I mean, I have to advertise myself to people. I don't know if I'm good at that. Yeah, and see, that's that's something I never would have thought of doing. Yeah. Well